Okay. Um, on our first topic of of uh, kalam. Okay, this is uh, matan jurumia. Matan jurumia is uh, the book of grammar. Uh, the person who compiles this knowledge is Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Dawud as Sunhaji. Right, as per what we see here, and Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Dawud as Sunhaji. Yeah. Okay, so he's the the main uh, author for this Matan Jurumia. His name is Abu Abdullah. Uh, he was born in Fas, Morocco, in the year of 672 Hijriah, and uh, passed away uh, in Morocco also at the year of 723 Hijriah. Okay. <coughs> this Matan Jurumia is uh, very important uh, and the most basic kitab for us to learn in terms of Arabic grammar before we move to other kitab or before we move to another uh, uh, advanced kitab we should learn Matan Jurumia first okay so Matan Jurumia here they make it into a table and diagram form we start with Kalam last session we Go to Kalaman. Kalaman. Okay. So, the author he start with Al Kalamu, Huwa Lafzul. So again, in between Al Kalam, in between Al Kalam and Lafaz, there's a domain here. Huwa. Okay. Huwa kan? Al-kalamu huwa lafzul murakabul mufidu bil wada'i Kalam consists of Speech Lafaz Speech That is arranged <coughs> Al-murakab Murakab at least by At least two words and above Okay and Then we have al-mufid Mufid means that Possess meanings And give benefit to meaning And we have bil wada'i Bil wada'i means with Arabic language <coughs> Okay When we mention Al-Kalam Again go back to the meaning uh, uh, Go back to the definition uh, of al kalam this is the four components that we need to understand and memorize uh, it consists of this so we go to al lafaz what is the meaning of al lafaz last last week we actually managed to <coughs> cover this part lafaz mean al lafzu lafaz mean al lafzu means huwa sawtu this is sawt eh huwa sawtu huwa sawtu al-mushtamilatu ala ba'dil huruf ba'dil huruf okay ala ba'dil huruf tahqiqan aw taqdiran aw Takdiran <coughs> So 
So this is the meaning of uh, This is the meaning of uh, Al-Lafaz Lafaz mean Huwa sawtul mushtamilatu ala ba'dil huruf Tahqiqan au taqdiran Means Huwa sawtu Is a form of voice Mushtamilatu That compres- compromise of Ala ba'dil huruf Compromise of Some huruf Alphabets Okay Some alphabets here means Al-huruf here means Go back to the go back to the meaning of huruf hijaiyah hijaiyah okay compromise of this huruf hijaiyah <coughs> then tahqiqan what what does this this mean tahqiqan tahqiqan means In a state of reality In a state Of reality Meaning That means In, in, in a most com, in, in a most confirmed way Where you listen A person when he He said that He said He, he utter a speech uh, Utter a speech like Muhammad So when you listen to the word Muhammad Example Okay, when you listen to the word here Here Muhammad This is tahqiq That means it's, it's, it's in a state of reality That means we understood right, The physical form of this 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 word Muhammadun Because it consists of Mim, Ha, Mim, Dal Right? This is the huruf hija'iyah that is being mentioned here Al-huruf Okay? Where else for Takdiran Takdiran We have Utterance of speech Example like this Ah Ah is like You know When when someone Is He He He's He, he, he He's in a state of uh, bo- Bodemness Bodem eh? Bodem Then he want to utter speech Ah Right, so ah, there is a way to write in uh, Arabic language. It's called ah, or uf. Uf means uf. Right, uf. Uf means like when someone when 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 your when your parent asks you to do something, then you reject their calling, then you say uf. Uh, you know the sound uh, actually uh, right? In English we say uh, right? U H, uh. uh. This is called takdir. It's a lafaz, but we have to takdir, right? <coughs> the same, the sound of uh, snoring, the sound of coughing. There is all a sautul mustamil latu, but we have to. Takdir, we, we have to uh, uh, how say you have to takdir and yeah? takdir means you have to make it relevant lah. and it's not relevant at, at, at the first place but we have to make it relevant ok Again? ok we move next now we have al-muraqab ok al-muraqab the meaning of al-muraqab al murakkabu meaning is ma turukkiba ma turukkiba min kalimataini fa aktsar okay Ma turukiba min kalimataini fa aksar. It means whatever that is uh, arranged, that is been arranged from two words, compromising of two words and above. That is the reality meaning of it. Eh? 
that is the meaning of uh, al murakkab then we have mufid here okay mufid we have the meaning of mufid al mufid it means ma afada ma afada faidatan yahsunu yahsunu sukutu sunu sukutu minal mutakallim minal mutakallimi was sami alaiha okay <coughs> What does this mean? Ma afada, whatever that benefits, faidatan, and whatever that give benefits, ah, uh, eh? yahsunu sukut. That means yahsunu sukut mean it 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 uh, beautify the silence. Tapi, but this is doesn't mean that it beautify the silence. I mean, yahsunu sukut min al mutakallimi wasami. That means al mutakallim is the speaker, and we mention al mutakallim means speaker. Asami means the person who listens, the person who listen to your conversation. So when the speaker convey the message to the listener. It, it must possess the yasunu sukut. Yasunu sukut, in a layman term, it means pause. In terms of like a pause that process understanding. of the speech of the speech okay that means if there's if there's silence that means for the listener and he it, it shows that the listener understands the meaning of the speaker's conversation or whatever message that he's trying to relay okay Mufid means mufid. Mufid means it gives benefit to the meaning. Uh, on a layman term, it means benefit to the meaning. So, you can have okay. You can have. We give example why this is so important. You can have a a, a sentence, okay? Yeah? Like comp compromise compromises of uh, four words, five words. Example: uh, Muhammadun Muhammadun Ahmadun eh, Muhammadun Ahmadu Muhammadun Ahmadu. ala ala jalasa example ala jalasa bi zaidin example in fact this whole sentence doesn't possess any meaning 
Muhammadun Ahmadu ala jalasa bi Zaidin. So we translate first Muhammad Ahmad is the name of a person. Muhammad above ala means above jalasa he said okay bi Zaidin with Zaid. Okay. So now this whole sentence we go back to the the meaning of uh, al kalam it is it is a lafaz lafaz means what sautul mushtamilu right so all this all these uh, words are all lafaz muhammad lafaz ahmad lafaz ala lafaz jalasa lafaz bizaidin lafaz then next we go to the understanding of murakkab murakkab means and ma turkiba min kalimataini fa akthar okay so all all of this are more than two words and above in a sentence but now the issue is okay now we have even have five words here now the issue is it doesn't possess any meaning so that means mufid mufid means the whole sentence must possess a beneficial meaning okay so when when we say muhammad ahmad above he said with zaid that means it doesn't possess any meaning cannot be translated cannot be uh, understand un, it's very hard for us to understand this whole sentence so this is not mufid mufid means okay take example of kalam mufid example muhammadun wasimun this is kalam mufid okay complete although just two words okay so Muhammad is a handsome guy. Okay, so he's kalam mufid. Understand? And then we move next to we move next to bil wadai. Bil wadai it means it must be in Arabic language. Okay, it must be in Arabic language. Okay. So again, if there's a statement that is lafaz, then murakab, then mufid, but it's not in Arabic language, it's in Malay. Muhammad telah pergi ke pasar, or in English. Muhammad went to the marketplace. So it's lafaz, it's murakab, it's mufid, it has meaning to the sentence, but it's not in Arabic language, so that is not counted as kalam. Understand? When it's counted as kalam, we have to apply the Arabic language. Then the whole process will be counted as kalam. Okay? Can. Okay, right. We move next to the divisions of kalam. Division of kalam, al kalam, aksamu kalam, thalathatun. Here got some uh, error here. So aksamu kalam, thalatha. The division of kalam, we have three. We see isim, fi'in, and harf. Harfu. So again, uh, we have acquired and learned this from our basic Arabic but in grammar we have a different approach and a, and, and a more detailed manner to understand so isim we start with isim first isim the meaning of isim okay the meaning of isim Al ismu kalimatun dalat ala ma'nan
फी नफसीहा फी नफसीहा वलम तक तरीन वलम तक त ولم تقترن بزمان بزمان وضع بزمان وضع okay what's the meaning of isim al ism the meaning of isim is the definition of isim is kalimatun dallat ala ma'na في نفسها ولم تقترن بزمان وضعا it means isim is a kalima kalima means a word dalat that shows on a ma'na that shows on a meaning في نفسها on itself okay في نفسها mean on itself on itself means go back to kalima al kalima okay the word itself the word the word that we want to prove of the mean, of, uh, on on the meaning walam taqtarin bi zamanin wad'an that has no relation lam taqtarin no relation no relation to time to time wad'an wad'an means uh, on a very clear perspective clear clear perspective okay al ismu means kalimatun dalat ala ma'nan fi nafsiha wa lam taqtarin bi zamanin wad'an it means it shows a word that has no relation that but the word itself has a prior meaning as a proper meaning but doesn't have any relation to time we take example we take example the word we take example the word Muhammad Muhammadun and also we take example another example the word Dorbun Dorbun and also we take as an example as Fathun Fathun Muhammad is the name of person Dorbun beatings beating is a noun fathun opening is also a noun so when we say a noun it's not a verb it cannot be related to time we cannot say uh, Muhammad uh, let's, say, let's say example he eat is the present tense past tense he ate right we cannot say Muhammad or we we, we put as ed Right. He learn example present tense. Then say he learn. Sorry, learn plus the ed. We cannot say Muhammad. Then past tense will be Muhammad. Understand? No such thing. Okay, no such thing. Okay. So basically, that is the meaning that once a isim, it cannot be related to time. Not like verb. Verb we say we say that he was, is, right, will. So this is noun cannot be related, cannot be related to time. So again, when we talk about isim, isim we have a few that we can uh, understand. Okay, uh, on the basic level, we already know how to identify isim. Must have a noon, alif lam, or kam hafujar. 
But on this topic of isim, so we will discuss, right, in a more detailed manner, okay, how to identify isim and al khafdu. Al khafdu that means jar. It also, it also means al khafdu. Also mean al jar. Al jar. And means harfu jar. As for what we have uh, learned before harfu jar, al khafdu al jarru is the same. Then is 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 same also one way for us to identify is same is tanwin. Is with tanwin. Okay. Then another way for us to identify is same also with dukhul al alif wal lam. It means the with the with the entry uh, or with the insertion of alif and lam. It means alif lam. Okay. If if we see al, right, you know that that word is a uh, isim. So now we want to discuss on huruful khafdi. Huruful khafdi, we have this nine uh, huruf. We have min, ila, an, ala, fi, rubba, al ba'u, al kafu, wal lam. Okay. So on a deeper on a deeper level. Okay. We will try to discuss on this uh, huruf jar. Okay. So hurul huruf al khabdi, wahia min. وإلى وعن وعلى وفي وربا والباء والكاف واللام وحروف القسم و وهي الواو والباء والتاء. Okay. So later we also discuss on the on what is حروف القسم. Okay. So we will discuss on the meaning of uh, on this part where the author did mention فليس مي يعرف بالخفض and verily Isim would be known with huruf jar, huruf khafat. And what are the huruf here? Which is min. One of it is min. Okay. One of it is min. So, a bit to touch on uh, on on this bab. Okay, when <coughs> we say huruf khafdi, let's use the eraser. Yeah. When we say huruf khafdi, huruf jar, again, anything that comes after huruf jar, example like min. Ila or ala, example like min. Anything that comes after huruf jar, it must be an isim. Example, we come an isim which is Muhammad. Originally is Muhammadun, okay, but because of min, because of min, you have to uh, take into consideration and change the. Vowels to Muhammadin to kasratan. Initially is domatan, now become kasratan. Because why? Because of min. So that's the effect of uh, min. It has a effect where anything that comes after min will be majrur. Again, we have learned a bit on this part. Okay, we have learned a bit on this part. What is majrur? Because when we talk about uh, the rulings of uh, vowels in uh, in the Arabic uh, in the Arabic grammar, it, it consists of four. The first one, the first one would be 
مرفوع second one will be منصوب is known sorry منصوب the third one will be مجرور where we discuss here مجرور أو مخفوض okay let me erase this one first okay And the fourth one will be majzum. Majzumun. Okay. So this is the four state eh, for every uh, grammatical analysis. So anything that comes after huruf jar, which is min, have to be majrur. Majrur, there's... Three signs of majrur, where we also will learn in uh, in uh, our grammar, in our Arabic grammar. The first sign of majrur is al kasra. Al kasra. Al kasra tu. That means anything that comes after or is it if it's in the state of majrur, it have to be in kasra. Then another sign of it. This is the first one. The second one. Will be alia, alia, alia u. Okay, that means depends what is the state. We will discuss on that also. If it's a jamak muzakar salim, or if it's a musanna, right? Dual form or a plural form. Plural form of jamak muzakar salim or asma ul khamsa. Then this year will be prominent okay we will discuss on that also for the future topics the third one will be al fataha al fatahatu the third one okay the third one al fatahatu this one also we will discuss it will be special specialized more on the topic of uh uh, isim ghay munsarif which is the noun that doesn't carry tanwin right inshallah we will discuss on that okay so going back to here so we have min ila an ala fi ruba al ba'u al kaf wal lam inshallah we go great detail on the usage of this okay now i want to touch on this part where we here the author have uh, mentioned here huruful qasam huruful qasam means is a uh, huruf that is to swear swear or take oath take oath that means if you want to swear of something right so you have to use this huruf from from uh, wow till ta okay so we have here al wow al ba al ta example let's say example go to the green board okay example we have in the quran and Wallaili. Sorry. We have in the Quran. Wallaili. Wallaili. Wadduhaha. ok 
Okay Walaili waduhaha Example from the Quran So if you see here We have a wow And, and this is a beginning of the surah Walaili waduhaha Surah Al-Layl Okay This wow is the, It doesn't mean It doesn't carry the meaning of N It carry the meaning of Swearing Swear That means And Al-Layl means Night Right By the night oh, Sorry Sorry some error here yeah. By By the night Okay I mean swearing, swearing by the night. Take an oath. Okay. Same. If a, if a person say, "Wallahi, wallahi," okay. The laugh, the 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 meaning of this "wallahi" is now possess the meaning of. By Allah By Allah That means swearing On Allah's name So The hukum of Huruf Qasam Anything that comes after Huruf Qasam Must be Majrur See Must be Majrur Okay Must be Majrur So the same Like uh, Like Huruf Jar Or Huruf Khafat Okay, but the difference is The difference is okay. Every Every huruf qasam Which is Al-Waw, Waba, Wata Is Is a hu, This is the term from our scholars eh? Is a huruf From Huruf Khafat Okay, is the huruf from huruf Khafat here Okay But not every huruf khafat is huruf qasam Understand? Because huruf qasam It possesses a different meaning It's by Allah They say Wallahi Billahi Tallahi Okay? It possesses a different meaning It means by Allah If we use huruf jar here with ba And huruf jar here ba And we say the similar statement Bil I say example here Billahi Here one we put as Billahi Second also we put as Billahi But the first one is Qasam Qasam means Swearing eh? The second one is Jar But they possess different meaning The first one is by Allah The second one would be With Allah Understand? So It possesses a different meaning So we cannot say that uh, Huruf Qasam Is the same like Huruf Jar No, not every Huruf Qasam Okay Oh sorry We cannot say Huruf Jar is the same like Huruf Qasam We cannot say every Huruf, qas, uh, huruf Jar is the, simil, is the same like Huruf Qasam But huruf qasam have the same value of uh, hukum Like huruf jar Because why? Anything that comes after huruf qasam will be majrur Same like huruf jar Anything comes after huruf jar will be majrur Can? Okay? Can I understand? Huh? Okay Alright Okay, we try to go to the next book Which is called uh, Al-Af'al Yawmiyah Al-Af'al Yawmiyah means uh, Verbs That we use daily Okay So now we Have already learned a bit of uh, grammar So we move to Af'al Yawmiyah Af'al Yawmiyah We have number one, which is 
akala can see ya we have akala ya sorry we have akala ya akala yakulu aklan akala yakulu is under which form again we have already learned tasrif we have already go through all the 17 forms so akala yakulu it falls under fa'ala yaf'ulu form okay so who, whoever have not yet learned this i think it's going to be hard for them to uh, learn this kitab because you need to learn uh, advanced sort of before you can enter this kitab ah okay so it it derives from akala uh, it derives from fa'ala yaf'ulu form so again akala means he ate yakulu is a present present tense okay so again because this uh this come into two page we have the akala yakulu aklan which is the tasrif approach then there's a, a sentence examples here so here we have akala akala al waladul akala al waladu al khubza see ya yeah? okay so again how can we translate this this is akala means he ate okay al waladu means the boy so it means the boy ate al khubza means the bread okay so again let's break it down here okay akala here is a fi'il again this is jumlah fi'liya so after fi'il we come the uh, definitely there they should come fa'il so this is a fa'il the dua and again from this format you can know it's the ta'diyah form not the lazim form understand so again when we said the sequence of uh, ta'diyah is fi'il fa'il then we come the maf'ulun bihi uh, right maf'ulun bihi which is the object so the object here will be the khubza al khubza which is the bread so in terms of uh, the grammar an analysis here okay fi'il verb fa'il is the al waladu because of the uh, the ruling of fa'il it has to be in the marfu form marfu means right dhamma okay for this case because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a mufrad which is a singular form so the dhamma have to be prominent there so when the dhamma is prominent that is confirm a fa'il then after fa'il definitely come maf'ulun bihi maf'ulun bihi the ruling of maf'ulun bihi must be mansub so that's why you see that's why you see fatha right so this is a uh, one approach that we can understand from akala okay Okay, we go back to the previous page akala okay akala if we go up to the fa'ala form okay fa'ala form we have akala you akilu right so again for i suggest you all follow this method for this fa'ala form okay he use this abbreviation of number number 2 for number 3 will be this fa'ala form okay number 
will be this af ala form ok next will be number 5 right number 5 will be tafa ala form and number 6 will be tafa ala form again all this you have to learn the advanced arabic before you all can uh, understand all this eh? number 7 is the in fa'ala form in fa'ala form then we have number 8 is the if ta'ala form if ta'ala form ok sorry I'm moving, I'm moving up here then we have number 9 eh? right number 9 we have the is taf ala form ok use this abbreviation ok all this number uh, roman roman numeral we call it Norman roman numerals so to save space you just have to refer this ok and so we have akala Akala If we go up to the Fa'ala form We have Akala Akala you akilu ta'kilan Okay And uh, this also have the same Meaning as this one also Af'ala perform So we have Akala Okay why Akala Can still remember why Akala If you go back to the originality Of this form is Af'ala form So you go back to Akala right Akala that means it will be Akala Two Hamza together Akala Correct So again two Hamza will, For this case It's been substituted to this Hamza with a mat so akala correct so akala is afala form okay is afala form these two it means to fit to fit okay then we have then we have The third form, which is the fa'ala form, so it becomes akala also. Okay, this means to dine, to dine, dine in a restaurant, dine, dine and eat is different. Eh? To dine that means you go there and patronize the, the the space and you consume the food. Again, okay, now we have a issue here. Okay. Yes, hold on. Eh? Let's save some space here. So, if you notice just now, a kala fa ala form and af ala form is the same. Correct? But both come from different factors okay we have the af ala form sorry we have the af ala form and we come a color too and we have the fa ala form and it become a color too but the difference here will be during their fail mudarat here will be what here will be you uh, or you you kilo 
Yuk kilo Here will be You are kilo There's a different in terms of the Fi'il Mudari' So again all this have to be uh, Revised uh, And go back to the revision of our advanced sort of Okay Okay Okay, we That will be dine Then go to number 5 We have tafa' ala form So we have Ta'akkala 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 means to consume To consume Okay Is the meaning of ta'akala ta Then we go up to the Wazan of Istaf ala So we have Is Is ta'akala Correct? Yes ta'akilu This is The meaning is to treat Something As a food Okay Example If a person He treat Tissue paper He eat tissue paper So for for certain individual They don't See Tissue paper as a food But for some They see tissue paper They say I'm hungry I want to eat tissue paper So he treat Tissue paper as a food So That person He, he can use this Uh we can describe is is color to him. Understand? Okay. Okay. Okay, that's about it.